AirAsia CEO Tony Fernandez once said, airlines are one of the last things to be liberalized. Flights used to be for the rich, but that is until low-cost low carriers like AirAsia became popular. However, the pandemic has disrupted this industry. While airlines are canceling flights and serving less customers, they're also using this time to digital, digitally transform their business in order to make it more sustainable in the long run. With this, how can AirAsia continue to be a leader in digitization? Hello, judges. My name is Hannah, and I'm joined by my teammates, Maggie and Annabeth. And together, as Team New Lighters, we're here to talk about how AirAsia can soar to infinity and beyond. We'll first introduce AirAsia as a company, and then discuss turning points in its history, success factors, and end off with recommendations and conclusions. But before we do that, let's take a deeper dive into AirAsia's company history and offerings. AirAsia was established by a government-owned conglomerate in 1994 and has soared the air since 1996. However, at its early stage, the company faced immense pressure from competitive forces and remained unprofitable for the first nine years of its operation. Recognizing this as an opportunity, Tony Fernandez bought AirAsia at a price of 25 US cents, along with its $11 million worth of debt. And under his leadership, not only did AirAsia become one of the most successful low-cost airlines, they also began to offer digital products to rebrand AirAsia as one of our favorite lifestyle travel brands. Amongst their digital assets, the main ones are Big Rewards, Snap, and the Super App. Firstly, Big Rewards is AirAsia's mobile rewards program to earn, pro to earn points and redeem gifts. Secondly, Snap allows customers to book their flights and hotel stay at a lower price bundle. For instance, each Snap includes purchase of flight, hotel room, and hotel-related add-ons to simplify travel logistics. And finally, the ASEAN Super App is a user-friendly platform that combines e-commerce, hotel booking, and flight booking together, making everything travel-related integrated in one application. While AirAsia was a first mover in offering low-cost flights, the airline industry has slowly been accommodating for more competing low-cost carriers, or LCCs. Last year, LCCs made up 35% market share of the industry, meaning that competitors like Malaysia Airlines and Jetstar Airways are matching AirAsia's unique selling propositions. And as a result, with LCCs becoming a key driver in the industry, AirAsia's digital transformation efforts can help differentiate the AirAsia brand. Moreover, the COVID-19 pandemic has shone light on AirAsia's other operational weaknesses. Currently, roughly 80% of AirAsia's revenue comes from ticket sales. And since air travel fell by 40% due to the pandemic, this has negatively affected the company's bottom line. Thus, revenue diversification and expanding on non-flight related services will be crucial to the future financial health. In addition, given the added competition and need to transform digitally, AirAsia will need to leverage its tech assets in order to differentiate their brand. In response to this, AirAsia has introduced AirAsia 2.0, a revamped ecosystem of services to include more than flights. So in order to maximize the effect of AirAsia 2.0, this begs a question, how can AirAsia emerge stronger out of the pandemic and effectively leverage their digital assets to create an ecosystem that elevates traveler experience? I'll now pass it on to Maggie to answer this question. Thanks, Hannah. So to tackle this question, let's first look at some of the ways AirAsia has become the company that it has today with some of the major turning points in its history. Today, we're going to highlight three major turning points. The first one, called Navigating the Airways, really highlights the early turmoil of AirAsia's unclear positioning from market entry. When AirAsia first launched, they didn't have clear branding and positioning. Back then, the market was dominated by a monopoly, Malaysia Airlines. Because of this, they failed to capture the market attention and suffered from low sales and poor customer loyalty. Things started to change when Tony Fernandez assumed the role of CEO in 2001. Operating on the slogan of Air Asia, now everyone can fly, Fernandez aimed to democratize air travel. With this, Air Asia pivoted with a strategic shift to position as a low cost carrier. Air Asia started to offer flights for as low as a dollar, simplified their operations, offered additional services as extra charge, and targeted a 25 minute turnaround time. Through this, they were able to undercut major competitors and gain ground in local and international markets. In just two years, customer growth skyrocketed and AirAsia experienced a 32% revenue increase compared to Malaysia Airlines at just 10%. 
The second turning point is when Air Asia started to expand abroad. While soaring high and wide, Air Asia needed to look for a strategic expansion strategy. When the Malaysian airline market, when the Malaysian airline market uh, stagnated with oversaturated competitors, this stunted growth for Air Asia on the international stage. Hence, their ambition to be the low-cost carrier for Air Asia lacked a feasible geographic expansion strategy. To expand globally, the company identified the countries with the highest potential, such as China, for being an untapped and emerging market, Thailand and Indonesia for being high tourism growth countries, and India for the demand in low-cost carrier services. Through adding sister companies by the name of Thailand Air Asia, Indonesia Air Asia, the establishment of central flight hubs from these countries became the driving focal point on Air Asia's expansion. As a result, Air Asia expanded successfully and dominates 61% of the local market share in Malaysia and became the third largest airline in Asian markets with 8% international market share. However, as technology evolves and air, um, airline services become increasingly cheaper, this leads us back to the question my colleague Hannah mentioned. How can Air Asia successfully fly through the digital space while staying ahead of digital and e-commerce trends post-pandemic? As we've all seen, Digital evolution has made our lives a lot easier. For the airline market, this means the majority of airlines have digital booking and servicing, travel packaging bundling, and omni-channel and e-commerce solutions for their clients. To stay ahead and to stay competitive, Red Beat Ventures was established as Air Asia's digital subsidiary. Red Beat Ventures developed AirAsia.com for online flight solutions, spearheaded a lot of customer loyalty and rewards, like Big Rewards, Air Asia Credit Card, and Big Pay. But more recently, Air uh, Red Beat Ventures spearheaded the ASEAN Super App, which is the one-stop shop for all of one's travel needs, from flights and hotel bookings to shopping to eating and groceries and even ride hailing. As a result, the bound to be successful ASEAN Super App would create an important digital ecosystem filled with all the necessities for travel. Whether it be that the customer enters into this ecosystem through required hotel booking, food delivery, or just flight services, Air Asia has now gained many new methods and touch points in acquiring and retaining customers while diversifying their revenue. Furthermore, the company has effectively increased loyalty and synergy within the ecosystem through the potential to cross-sell and upsell multi-channel solutions. Now I'll pass it on to Annabeth to discuss some success factors. Thank you, Maggie. Air Asia has three main success factors. Now let's dive into the first one. The first one is the ability to cut costs. AirAsia implemented automatic, automatic check-in procedures, fuel-efficient aircrafts, and offered no free food or assigned seats to help them reduce costs. But when profit margins drank, AirAsia was quick to react. For example, when the flights was unprofitable, they quickly reacted it by eliminating that flight. The second success factor is a unique branding strategy. Firstly, AirAsia has adopted brand extension, but in addition to that, AirAsia really aligned their slogan and vision of making flying accessible and affordable together. Truly, now everyone can fly. Thirdly, as my partner Maggie mentioned, AirAsia's largest upcoming asset will lie in, in its super app. Through the super app, AirAsia can tap into an exponentially growing e-commerce market at a CAGR of 7% over the next five years. Being a first entrant, Air Asia will leverage its first mover advantage in the e-commerce airline space and able to beta test and gather more customer feedback to strengthen their innovative brand image. Now that we know how Air Asia is so successful, let's take a look at some of the challenges and recommendations. The first challenge is that they have too many digital assets that are not effectively integrated with some platforms like Big Pay. Air Asia Fresh and much more, many of the customers we surveyed were confused about when to use them and how that links together. Our solution is to create an ecosystem to help them um, navigate their lifestyle and traveling through funneling sales from flights to e-commerce and food delivery services by sending notifications of e-commerce and food services platform during their trip to help them convert them into using more of our digital assets. Our second challenge is the COVID-19 pandemic, where most of the airlines are beginning to digitize. For example, 90% of the airlines are already investing in tech, and 64% of them are implementing digital transformation. And everyone is digitizing, so AirAsia would need to work harder to differentiate themselves amongst competitors. 
To do this, we recommend using big data and AI to analyze traveler insight and recommend food and e-commerce services at the right time during their trip to make it convenient and cohesive. And to do this, we'll run algorithms to predict their favorite food and e-commerce products based on their customer insights. With all of this, let's dive into why our case is so significant. Our case is so significant because in recent years, airline travel has become an important option for many of us. However, COVID-19 has shown that the airline industry is heavily reliant on ticket sales, which means that airlines face the huge risk of being impacted by macro trends like the pandemic, as well as other um, emergency trends in the market. Hence, it is important to see how airlines can diversify their revenue One and attract more customers to be less reliant on ticket sales moving forward. And Air Asia, the company we pitched today, is an example of this happening. Through this case, we saw Air Asia leveraging digital assets to create a one-stop shop travel experience for customers. They create an ecosystem to make sure everyone can use Air Asia's digital platforms to book flights, hotels, and even buy food and products together under the same umbrella, Air Asia. What they're doing is, even though all the airlines are digitizing, they're differentiating themselves from all the other digitized airlines by really standing out and providing a cohesive experience, a very convenient platform that allows all the digital platforms to tie together under Air Asia. We're so proud to be able to present this company today and really help them pave the way to success and soar in the air. Thank you so much for your time. We'll now open up the floor to any questions.